This is Brian with ScreenFiles.com in review. What I'm talking about today is Michael Bay's Six Underground. And at heart, this movie is essentially Mission Impossible, in which an unknown person gets together a team to fight bad guys. The ideas behind this movie you've seen before, but the execution. I'm not sure Michael Bay is brilliant or a hack particularly with this movie because it does some things very well does other things not too well and it's oddly sloppy at times for instance the advertising in this movie is off the hook it is insane they advertise as in you get a shot of ryan reynolds gin he is the one of the co-owners of aviation gin you see that featured in the movie it is ridiculous ridiculous with the product placement and there are other instances as well. I think was it um I think it's Terraza Coffee and there are a few other instances. The, it's insane the blatantly obvious product placement in this movie. Maddeningly so in fact. But on the other hand you have action scenes which are just remarkable to look at and just so well choreographed and shot. Be they car crashes or physical fighting type scenes. And I should mention, this movie is violent. At times leaning into ultra violence in fact, because people are getting killed all over the place. And unusual for these type of movies, innocent people are getting killed all over the place. Hit by cars, shot, and all sorts of odd, it's an odd movie in that way. And also oddly sloppy. There's a scene at the end of this movie where they're running on the outer layer, I'm not even sure what it's called, of a yacht. The yacht is sinking. The yacht is literally angled this way in the water, yet they're running like this. It makes no sense and it is really sloppy. And there's one other instance of this type of thing that comes to mind, but I think what actually happened is that Michael Bay movies seem, at least Six Underground, I assume others as well, I don't really watch a lot of his work because I don't think he's He's an odd filmmaker, and I don't really enjoy his movies on a whole, but his movies seem to be made in the edit, which is to say he shoots tons of footage. Now, the footage he shoots, I think, is very exacting. He knows exactly what he wants to see, but the movie is made in the edit. He shoots tons of stuff, and he just cuts it to death. And in particular, it struck me that he was trying to imitate, at least it felt to me, Tony Scott the brother of Ridley Scott, who's directed things like Man on Fire um, and a few others that aren't coming to mind right now. But he has, Tony Scott has a certain style and in Six Underground, Michael Bay seemed to be actively imitating it. So that was interesting, mildly off-putting, but interesting nonetheless. Six Underground is a terrible movie. Now, now keep in mind, when I say terrible, I don't mean it's not watchable, because it is. The thing is, though, it's what I would like to call the pain and gain problem. Michael Bay does not do comedy well. This movie has some funny moments, though, but they almost feel accidental. He doesn't get satire, but he tries, and you can see it happening on screen. He tries satire, he tries comedy, and both of them he doesn't do well. And I suspect I know why. Satire and comedy involve small moments leading to bigger ones. Michael Bay doesn't do small. Everything is big and bigger and biggest in his movies. He doesn't do small character moments. He doesn't do intimacy with any real talent. And therefore, he doesn't get those small important moments that are vital to any movie working. This movie, you should care more about the people in this movie, considering the peril they go through. Yet, I'll tell you honestly, I didn't care about anybody in this movie. As I said, it's not a good movie. It's a fascinating movie. It's an expensive movie. If this movie doesn't cost 70, 80, 100 million dollars, I'd be shocked, frankly. It looks expensive as hell. The movie revolves around these six people who get together to try to stop evils that are out of the reach of 
other types of agencies. So they go to depose essentially this, I want to say emperor, but that's not the right word, not present either, dictator? Dictator. In this seemingly Middle Eastern country. Now the thing is about the Middle East, they don't have, that I know of, and please, if I'm wrong, correct me, but what Middle Eastern country has a day of the dead, particularly in the way they tend to think about God and how to treat and respect God, the idea that they have a day of the dead really doesn't make any sense to me. It's really odd. And it doesn't take a rocket science to research this. And I'm clearly not a rocket science. But nonetheless, why would I put a day of the dead in a Middle Eastern country? Just don't do it. Put any other, I don't, read a book. It's not that difficult. But that type of sloppiness is pervasive through this movie. As I said, it's not a good movie. It's a fascinating movie, but if it only had invested some of that time and energy they spent with these great stunts and car crashes and fights to have a little character development so that maybe we care about these people. It's a very frustrating movie. If you're into pointless, seemingly pointless violence, if you're into constant explosions, if you're into cars getting tore up, this is the movie for you, because it happens all the time. But the movie leaves you a little empty because it's not about people. It's about ideas of people doing things and archetypes doing things. But there are no humans. There's almost a human, the sniper who comes in later, almost comes off as a human more so than probably anyone else in the movie. But he's still, on the whole, an archetype, um, an outline of a human. And so, it's a frustrating movie. It, I mean, I, I don't know what Michael Bay's life was like growing up, but I get the feeling he wasn't hugged a lot because he does not do movies. And I'm not only talking about Six Underground, I'm talking about movies in general directed by Michael Bay. He doesn't do humans interacting with each other very well. It's, it's really interesting, but it makes Six Underground unfortunately really disposable, really empty, and just vacant. Whether it's giant robots or people, in a Michael Bay film, they amount to the same thing. They're there to facilitate the next explosion. They're there to move you on to the next action scene. And as I said earlier, the action scenes are well shot and it looks great. The cinematography on this movie is fantastic. It looks remarkable. Crisp images, colors pop. It's beautiful to look at. But at the same time, it's empty, it's cold, it's vacant, and all of Ryan Reynolds' charm can't make it anything else. This is Brian with ScreenFiles.com and Review. Let me know what you think down below. Do you agree? Disagree? Let me hear from you. Peace.